ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my co-host, Steady. I'm sorry I didn't put up a video all last week, guys, as you may hear in my voice still. Um, I'm feeling quite sick. So I got bitten by some mosquitoes, and I've been very careful here, not since I've been living in Taiwan, to not get bitten by mosquitoes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so after I did, I realized that uh, I seem to react a lot differently to the mosquitoes here than the ones back in New Zealand. It made me really sick, and yeah, so I'm on the tail end of it now, but I thought, I wanted to make a video for you guys here today, and it's about a good topic too. So, in the previous video we talked about Intel's 10 nanometer problems, which are just ridiculous. So, from that information, it's looking like Intel will not be uh, making or having any desktop 10 nanometer CPUs until like 2022. So, all of this year through next year through 2021, it's looking like at this stage anyway, things may change. At this stage, Intel on the desktop will still be on 14 nanometer plus, 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 whatever. Uh, on the mobile platforms and stuff, they will go down to 10 nanometer though. So that's, I, I just can't believe if that's gonna end up being the case. Intel will be so far behind AMD at that point. It's just going to be insane. And I don't want you guys to think that with this video today, it's like we're just bullying Intel over and over because I'm actually in the process right now of making my Hardware Legends episode, uh, episode three, which we're talking about Intel Sandy Bridge. That's a very pro Intel video. You know, Sandy Bridge is a legend, uh, legendary CPU. So let's talk about this one. So this article comes from WCCF Tech, but it's been widely reported. Future AMD Ryzen CPUs can boost transistor density by 80% and feature 15% speed gain with TSMC's Bleeding Edge 5 nanometer process node. So just to sum things up, maybe you don't follow the tech news all the time. Uh, right now, well, very soon, I should say, uh, <laughs> Zen 2 will be coming out. So Computex is the end of this month, and we'll have a lot more information then. I'm not going to say any more. Um, so, yeah, uh, Zen 2 is uh, 7 nanometer, so it's coming down quite a bit. You, If you do not know Zen Plus or the current Ryzen 2000 series of CPUs are uh, 12 nanometer CPUs. Uh, so that's going to be decent, coming down to 7 nanometer. For Zen 2 and then uh, what will come after that so most likely the Ryzen 4000 series as you would imagine if the next one is 3000 then you'd assume it's 4000 that will be 7 nanometer plus and then after that uh, you will have what what we're assuming to be the 5 nanometer chips TSMC's TS 5 nanometer chips so the article goes on to read in a report published by PC Games N, it is stated that if AMD was to utilize TSMC's latest 5 nanometer node, also dubbed as N5, the company may expect an uplift of 80% in transistor density, 15% in overall performance, and a 45% reduction in die area with their next generation Zen based Ryzen series. So, this would be huge for AMD. If you think about it, they'll be going down to 7 nanometer this year. It'll be seven nanometer plus next year, and they could potentially be down to five nanometer by 2021. At which point, from the current roadmaps, the leaked roadmaps from Intel, it's looking like Intel will still be stuck on 14 nanometer by 2021, unless something changes. This would just be so massive for AMD that I don't even know where to begin. Now, it's not confirmed that they would be able to get down to 5 nanometer by that time. If we go on to read the article, it says, It looks like TSMC has confirmed volume production of N5-based chips as early as the first half of 2020, but AMD won't be jumping the bandwagon that soon. We know that AMD has planned their Zen 3 processors to be based on the 7 nanometer plus you... you uh, EUV process node from TSMC. 
these seven nanometer plus chips will make up for the large majority of TSMC's orders from AMD. The seven nanometer plus process node itself delivers hefty increases in density, 20%, and increases in power efficiency by 10%. The Zen 3 base chips are planned for some time in 2020, with Zen 2 launching this year. So yeah, we know that it's gonna be seven nanometer for Zen 2, and then for Ryzen 4000, it will stay on seven nanometer. However, there will be some advancements there. It'll be enhanced. This is like what we saw going from, you know, Ryzen the 1000 series to Ryzen 2000. It, it'd be the same thing. And this is, I guess, AMD just copying what Intel supposedly used to do, which was TikTok, uh, which was you would have the uh, die shrink and then you would have an optimization and then, you know, the process node shrink and then optimization. That's what it used to be like for Intel. It hasn't been like that for four years, maybe. Jeez. Yeah, maybe four years, is it? Wow. Anyways, the article goes on to say, the question is whether Zen 4, which is currently in development, would be utilizing the TSMC 5 nanometer process node or not. If AMD ends up using TSMC 5 nanometer node by 2021, they will have a huge edge on Intel, who will be relying on their 10 nanometer process node for server and consumer based CPUs. The Zen 4 chips, however, can also make use of another node that TSMC has planned to launch after N5. That's the N6 or 6 nanometer process node. So, as I said, there's a lot that's still up in the air right now, but this is looking pretty good. AMD. As we spoke about in the previous video, uh, which if you didn't watch it was about uh, Intel on 10 nanometer and all the delays there, so go and watch that one. AMD right now are very much in the driver's seat and it really seems, this is what I touched on on Hardware Legends because I'm just getting through that video now because obviously it take a while for me to make. It seems like after Sandy Bridge, Intel basically fell asleep they're like the sleeping giant they they had all this innovation and then it really it's not like it, it it just ended like that after sandy bridge it's more like it kind of trickled out like ivy bridge haswell it was all just less and less innovation and that's what's really kind of sad is that it sandy bridge was this huge jump up uh, and then it's just been these minor, more and more minor improvements with each generation. That's how I would put it. Where this is a very different approach from AMD. If we're seeing if, if Zen 2 is all it's hyped up to be, which it probably won't be, knowing just tech in general, a lot of times things are more hyped up and they don't deliver on the hype. I would say, uh, thinking back now, there hasn't been many releases that have really met the hype. Maybe Pascal was the last one I can think of in recent memory, the last one that's come out. I mean, the the original Ryzen was another one as well. Uh, that was obviously a huge step for AMD, so they, those two come to mind in, in more recent memory. But this would just put AMD very much in a good spot. Intel would be in an even worse spot if this happens, and I don't really know what else to say. Um, this is just really good for AMD. And uh, and Lisa Sue must be very, very happy with herself. These these Ryzen CPUs are looking very good. The Zen 2 ones from everything I've been seeing so far. As I said, we don't know for sure just yet, but we will very soon. And uh, I, I think AMD is already moving into the driver's seat and I think they will stay there for a considerable amount of time judging from this uh, but I want to throw it to you guys and this is just a question I have in the comment section down below can you tell me what like CPU you're running right now I just want to have an idea on who's running Intel and who's running AMD it's fine you know whatever it is maybe you've got a new CPU maybe you've got an old CPU if you've got an older one and you're planning on upgrading sometime soon, could you also tell me what CPU you're planning to upgrade to? Because that would be good for me to know as well. So just put your CPU 
and if it's maybe an older one then if you're planning on upgrading which one that is maybe if you got a new one and you're not planning on upgrading then don't bother so me personally i run the in my personal rig i run the intel i9 9900k and then in my second rig the amd rig that has a 2700x in it but my reason for this is i just want to see how many of you guys my audience is mainly enthusiasts how many of you guys are actually running uh, AMD or Intel CPU so we can go look through the comments together and then we can see how many of you guys are actually running these things So I think it'd be really interesting now. I thank you guys for watching this video I'm sorry that the energy is a bit lacking and uh, this video may have been Not not quite up to the usual standard, but I'm still not feeling entirely well But don't worry because the next video that will be coming out is the Sandy Bridge Hardware Legends. I know you guys will be really excited for that because we delve into more of this stuff and maybe newer people will like to know more about uh, what made Sandy Bridge such a good leap forward for uh, Intel. So definitely subscribe if you want to catch that video as soon as it drops and I'll see you all next time.